I'm Greg Todd, the creator of Smart Success Healthcare, and this is my story. So, cup of time. Cup of time. Let's reminisce. I want you to think back to 1997 when we got together and I was in PT school. Mm -hmm. And remember initially you were stressed because I was spending so much time on trying to become this physical therapist, right? Yeah. How did that make you feel? Was that stressful? No, was that tough? Yeah, that was stressful because after we met and we were dating and we we're having all this great fun and then here comes time to get serious about, um, you know, PT school yeah. and you were gone a lot yeah. <laughs> and studying. What did you think I was doing? <laughs> thought I was I messing know. around with some girl yeah, or something? I thought you had a girl on the side. <laughs> I remember telling you, you know, that um, I, you know, I'm about to be a physical therapist and my big dream was in 10 years, I would make $50,000 a year. Mm -hmm. I got that job with Health South. Yeah. And I was making 39,500, which was a lot better than Perry Ellis. Yes, exactly. Right? <laughs> and um, I remember thinking, if I stay there for 10 years, I'm gonna make 4% increase every year because I'm gonna be the best employee they've ever had. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do everything that they want. And I will one day, 10 years from now, I'll make $50,000 a year. And I promise you, that house in Plum Bay. Yeah. My name is Kara Welke. I am an occupational therapist I'm from a small town in South Dakota. I grew up on a farm um, outside a small town of about 80 people. I currently live in North Dakota, outside of a town about 60,000. So when I graduated college, I ended up getting a job at the place I had my level two field work on. And at that position, I was in an acute care hospital in um, St. Luke's in Sioux City, Iowa. And at that job, I mean, I did the traditional occupational therapy, but I was also trying to set up additional programs. Um, there was a program I was trying to get set up to get services in an assisted living that was nearby. I was trying to get a grant to get like a shower to bring into the acute care so we could practice on um, tub transfers and I was always trying to do different things. So I first met Greg um, in May of 2019. I had never heard of Greg before. I had no idea of his community or people. And I showed up to this event not knowing anyone. And the first day I, I go to this conference all by myself and the event, there was music and dancing and everyone was happy and having the greatest time. And one of the first speakers passed out champagne and it was just exhilarating. Um, it was different than I had ever experienced before. And it was at that event that I just got so excited and I'm like, we need to do this for occupational therapists. So I remember approaching Greg and being like, I wanna do this for OTs, um, we need to, you know, OTs don't have anything like this. We need to be able to inspire occupational therapy professionals to get out there and start their own business. So when I started, um, when I went to Smart Success for PT in May of 2019, I was still teaching um, and I had started my business, but again, it was very small and I, probably made my money back within the first few months just by being an affiliate because I was really excited about Greg's program and what it did and what it could do for other people. And again, I had no idea what an affiliate was. So I was super stoked that I could spread the word about something that helped me. And yet that also helped me bring money. So um, within the first year, I think, it was almost 80,000 in affiliate income, um, which is you know, more than I made as a teaching in an occupational therapy assistant program. Um, and then throughout, you know, I, now I have a couple different businesses and trying to do too much at one time can also be a downfall. So things I have learned is to really focus and narrow down and that has really helped the businesses grow and um, become more successful. 
at that point, I realized that I was gonna have to do something different yeah. than what they they said that I needed to do, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I remember just feeling so frustrated and angry and just realizing that maybe the dream that I sold you on of having this house in 10 years, it wasn't gonna happen unless I did something different. Mm -hmm. So I just knew at that point I had to do something different. And it was about four months later that I got the call to move up to Tampa or yeah. to do the interview. Yeah, you remember when we came up yes, for the interview? Yeah. And then you got pregnant. Uh, yeah, and then to throw, <laughs> to, <laughs> to make Who it a little that? bit more interesting. Yeah. Why'd you get, <laughs> why did that happen? <laughs> Whose idea was that? <laughs> Whose idea was that? Yeah, yeah, and weren't we supposed to like not have kids for like five, five or six years or yeah. something? Our, yeah, yeah, yeah. Our, our, plan, <laughs> our plan, our plan was no kids yeah. for five to six years mm -hmm. after <laughs> us starting our careers. We were gonna travel. Yes, we're, we're gonna do all these things. Travel, and and then one day, you know, like we would have kids. Yeah. Hey, my name is Joseph Skugi. I'm a physical therapist. I currently live in Tampa, Florida, uh, and I've been practicing physical therapy since 2017. And uh, the, the earliest memory that I have of when I chose to become a physical therapist was back in high school. It was my junior year in high school. Um, and the reason why I chose to be a PT in the first place was uh, not because of any choice that I had. In fact, when I was growing up, I was given three choices, which I've realized a lot of immigrants were given the same exact three choices. I was given the choice of either becoming a doctor a lawyer or an engineer and physical therapy was not in the picture at all. In fact, I didn't understand what PT was. I'm, and what ended up happening was I got into that room. Um, I listened to this physical therapist present and all I could remember thinking was, wait a minute, they get paid to do that. So when I graduated, my journey after graduating from school is a little different. Um, so was it, was I, was it what I expected? Yes and no. <laughs> so, well, as I mentioned before, um, my first job right out of school was working for Greg, um, and believe it or not, they didn't even have a job opening, so what I ended up doing was um, I moved from Michigan all the way down to Tampa, Florida. Uh, my girlfriend at the time had gotten a job in Tampa as a school psychologist, and so I was like, yeah, I gotta move down because we're gonna get married at some point, and I gotta get things together, and so um, I remember having multiple interviews in Tampa and realizing I don't wanna work for anyone else other than Greg. And and, and the, the, the main reason for that was because I understood that if I'm in a space where I can constantly learn business, constantly learn how to actually do this from not only the, the side of being a clinician, but also the side of being a business owner, then I want to be in that space because I knew that I want to have my own business that grows and serves a lot of people, which ended up being a little different than what I expected in terms of, like I thought at one point that I was going to have my own clinic, but it ended up being that I uh, now just love online business a lot more, but that's neither here nor there. But what I did was that three months, like two to three months after school, um, I came down here. They did not have a job opening. And so what I did was something that I don't think most clinicians would do right out of school is I just volunteered. I said, listen, I know y'all don't have a job. I just kept showing up. But Greg will tell y'all, <laughs> like I kept showing up. I kept like interacting with patients. I learned their systems. I learned how they treat patients. I learned the business side of it. I learned the front desk side of it. I learned all of it. I just immersed myself in it. Um, and you know, a few months in, then a job opportunity was presented to me, which was amazing. But uh, but it kept me very humble. But it also kept my eyes open because what I I remember telling Greg this. I said um, when I was doing all that volunteer work, I knew one of two things. Either number one, at some point, they would hopefully offer me a job or I would learn everything I possibly could and go and start my own business. I just knew from that point that I, I, I could not be a, a regular staff PT uh, working for any other business. And so um, so that's, so if I were to go back and say any anything to myself, like any piece of advice, give myself any piece of advice, uh, it would probably be somewhere between 2020 and 2021. Um, because at that point, our business was growing, uh, but I realized that I had a lot of fears about people's uh, opinions, uh, what people said. Um, I had a hard time with like DMs if people didn't like what we were saying or it left us on red or comments, uh, running ads, being scared of what people would say in the chat section, um, the doing live webinars, which we've done for years, but sometimes I was so afraid of what people would say um, that it held me back. And what I would say to myself is 
number one, it really isn't as bad as you think. And what I realized is a lot of the stuff that I was terrified of, once I started doing it, I was like, yo, it's really not that bad, right? Like whatever you think is the worst case scenario, rarely ever is as bad as you think. It's 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 not always amazing, but then you realize, oh, like I could have done that before. And so um, I've realized that there's months and even years that I've wasted in certain areas of our business that could have helped us get to where we are currently faster. Uh, and so if I would say anything to myself is um, stop being so freaking afraid of what people are going to think about you, right? Like what, whatever they're going to say, it doesn't matter. Like chances are they're probably struggling with their own stuff as well. Um, and if they're not, then they're probably just, I mean, truthfully, no one ever says anything negative about other people um, if they are doing something amazing in their own life as well. So um, it just shifted my perspective on how people think, how people see things, and the fact that it really doesn't matter. And also, we're all doing something. So especially for me as a business owner, I would tell myself, you're doing this for people that like need you badly. Like the people you are serving need what you are providing. So it doesn't matter if out of 10 people that you reach out to, if nine of them are, are giving you flack, right? Well, the one person that you're helping change their life for their family, for the community they're impacting, that's the person you're doing it for. So focus on them. And if you do that, um, you'll do this 10 times faster and stop being so afraid of putting yourself out there simply because you're afraid of the people that'll say uh, negative things. And so that's exactly what I'd say. I will be attending SSHC Live 2023. And for those of you or whoever is listening to this right now that is on the edge, that is unsure of whether they should do it, I'm gonna tell you this. Back in 2017, um, Greg was doing his first live event, same exact hotel, Clearwater, Florida, and I was a student. I was broke, <laughs> like I was broke and I was moving from one city to another uh, during my last year of clinical rotation. So I told Greg, I was like, Greg, I don't think I could pull this off. I don't think I'll be able to do it. I had just gone from Michigan to San Antonio, Texas. And as a student, it would require me making that trip and then flying to Clearwater, Florida for a day or two, only to come back to San Antonio. And for me, that felt impossible. And so I actually remember having a conversation with a few of Greg's family members and uh, they persuaded me to go. And what I'll say today is if I had not gone, our business today would not exist. Where I live today, would probably not where I live. Um, the life that we've been able to create for um, for our son and our future children would not be what it is. And it was because I was in a room where it wasn't digital anymore. It wasn't virtual. It wasn't online. It was real human beings. And the connections that I made in that room within really what was a 24 hour period, because I didn't even stay for the whole event, changed my entire life. And so if you're on the fence, if you don't have the funding, if you don't have the finances, find a family member, find someone that can loan you the money, get a plane ticket, drive your car, get a train, whatever you got to do and be there because it will drastically change your life. And I'm not saying that just to say it. I'm saying that because that's exactly what happened to me. And I think I think we realized that no one was going to save us. Mm -hmm. No one was here to bail us out. Yeah. We weren't happy. You weren't happy with my work schedule. I was unhappy and we knew that there had to be a change. I went out of my comfort zone mm -hmm. and didn't know how I was going to eat, didn't know how I was going to pay for yeah. medical, yeah. didn't know any yeah. of that. Stuff. Had no job lined up. No insurance. <laughs> no insurance. <laughs> baby. <laughs> but at this time you were kind of considering starting your own right. clinic, yeah. remember? Yep. So that mm -hmm. was, it, it wasn't just, you know, okay, I'm have nothing planned you right. kind of were thinking this is the path this that the i path I'm need take. to take now so. so hi guys my name is kelly alhui i am founder of ortho pelvic physical therapy and pelvi biz uh, my clinic is in sterling virginia and i got started three years ago so when i applied to physical therapy school number one it took me a year to get in. The first time I was denied from nine schools that I would that I applied to. So that was a first uh, realization that it was very hard to get into PT school back then and it still is, but that was something that was a major hurdle that I had to overcome. That was step number one. Step number two was completing physical therapy school. When I went into it, I wanted to be a sports physical therapist and I came out of it wanting to do pelvic health and back then, 13 years ago, many people were not doing pelvic health and I was really frowned upon when I got out of school to do that. And uh, you know, we all had to take our boards. And that was another hurdle that I had to overcome was I failed my boards for the first time. 
and I had to retake that. And that was something that I didn't know if I was gonna be a PT, and it was something that made me just having to keep push and push and push to be able to, you know, do what I love. Yeah, so I did not instantly become rich working with all these famous people. There was kind of a big misconception. Hey, I'm surrounding myself with the right group of people. You wanna be in with these people. But the reality was I was busting my ass literally from 7 a.m. in the morning to like three o'clock. My husband was calling me being like, where are you? I'm hiding out at these mansions, waiting for these people to come off set. And you know, I wouldn't get home until that time. And it just, I was being, my body was being so worn down. I didn't really realize it in the moment. I just thought this is what you had to do. No one taught me differently. So to get more money to pay my, for my student loans and just to live, I thought let's just keep adding on jobs. So when I joined the challenge, I didn't have any expectation. I just thought it's $99. I can take this. I'm going to do it. And I think within like the first two days, I was like, wow, my mind is blown. Like what is, what is going on? So I, I um, remember every single night it was, it was 20 minutes a day. I do remember this 20 minutes a day that we would listen to Greg. And what I did that I think was a different than a lot of people is I would listen to one word. He said, write it down, listen to another word. He said, write it down. And I probably reviewed that challenge, the whole challenge over 20 times because I just kept watching it. And every single time I watched it, I got another little nugget and I just did the thing. And I remember also during that challenge of, uh, I would take notes and they'd be like, okay, he's gonna still continue to talk. And I am emailing or whatever right away to like do the thing that he told us to just do. And I was not waiting, like there was no waiting happening whatsoever. And I just started taking action. Yeah, so after the challenge, I think it wrapped up in February. I think it wrapped up then. Yeah. After the challenge, then Greg made a 3K offer. And my husband's not here, but if he was here, him and I got in a major fight um, because I was like, I need to join this challenge. I have to join this challenge. And my husband was like, are you nuts? At that point, that was our first time we bought a house, by the way. So we bought this like $400,000 house and we saved up for eight to nine years to buy this house. And we were so excited. Um, and we didn't have any money. We were, it, we were out of money. And he was like, there's no way we don't have $3,000. So this massive fight was happening. He's like, don't do it. And I was like, no, I'm doing it. And I did it. <laughs> And he was pissed at me. He was really pissed. And uh, make a long story short, I joined another challenge that Greg had or another you know, set of programs that he had. And that's when I decided that it's time, I'm going to make the leap and I'm gonna go all in. Yeah, so in the, in the first month of me quitting my job, I was able to replace my income, which was 8K. In one month, I went from zero to 8K because I didn't wanna sleep in a tent. And I had bills. I had $4,000 I had to make. That was my goal. And if I could make that, I knew I could do it. And that was to pay my rent, pay my student loans, all that kind of stuff. And I said, I'm not going to live in the tent. I'm Watch me. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. And I didn't let anything stop me. I, I didn't care if I had to work from 7 a.m. to 8 o'clock at night trying to just talk with people. I was willing to do it because I didn't want to go back to the life that I was living before that. The thing is guys that, you know, some people will say, Kelly, I wanna be you or whatever, or hey, I wanna do this. Look, I can say this, I am no one special. Um, there's many different things that have happened in my life that has made me the person that I am to use the pain. Um, I have a hearing loss in my right ear. I had a learning disability. I can't read or write well. Um, but what I do know is because of those experiences that I've had and those pain points that I've had growing up and the trouble that I had in school has actually led me to be okay with being different and being okay with doing something that's not what everyone else is doing. And because of that, I've um, been able to use that pain to drive me to then be able to say, you know what, I am gonna do this differently. How can I do this differently? Well. Can I make an investment? A lot of people aren't willing to make the investment. 
And once you start to make your first investment, the first investment is the hardest, I would say, because you just don't know what is, what can happen. And so, you know, going to the point, number one, I'm not anyone special. You really just have to decide is, is your pain enough? And if your pain's not enough, then I think you gotta dig deeper and figure out, poke the pain a little bit. Like if it's not enough, then say, how can I like, how can I make this a little bit worse so that I actually take the steps to invest? And I think that was the biggest thing for me is that my pain was so bad, my health was so bad that it didn't matter at that point, even what my husband or your spouse is going to say to you. Um, you just know it in like your soul that you have to make the jump because there is no other option. And it's so worth the investment because it's going to pay off times 10 uh, when, you, when you make that leap. I think the biggest message that I could say is, number one, find an amazing mentor. And that could be clinically, but that also could be someone that you look up to that maybe has the things that you want in life, whether or not that's a money thing, whether or not that's a family thing, whether or not that is the time freedom that someone has find an amazing mentor and stay with that mentor, stay focused. Uh, we see that many people tend to like veer off and do all these other things, that's cool, but like if you stay focused, it's actually gonna get you to where you want faster. That's what I believe. So just stay focused on you know what you want and invest in, invest in yourself. It's the number one investment. I've made lots of investments over the past three to four years now, now that I have, um, you know, been successful and the fact that I've invested in real estate, I've invested in commercial real estate, um, personal real estate, and then also in myself. And the number one biggest investment, as you guys can probably see with this video is on yourself. I have 800 X my investment on myself, um, just by, investing in these programs and been able to learn a new skill that's allowed me to uh, play the time and money game. So at that point, you know, we leveraged the one thing that we had, which was other people's money. Mm -hmm. And we leveraged our house and we went and we did three investments. You remember what they were? Oh you remember God, that? Yeah. Well, one of them was Renewal Rehab. <laughs> yeah, Renewal, which is which is the clinic we're talking yeah, about. Uh -huh. Which um, that was when you had to borrow the money on yep. the house mm -hmm. to buy in, and then we thought we might try our hand in the <laughs> flip or flop. Flip or flip flop. flop. We tried to get a home, townhouse. Home making. That, and, the, and that flop. <laughs> and it flopped. Yeah. It, was, it didn't flip. It yep. flopped. And, and then you remember the other and one? And then yes, the um, your cousin's um, investment. investment thing that ended up being the like a trading. Um, pyramid <laughs> scheme. It ended up being a pyramid scheme, yeah. 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 So we lost yeah. all the money there. Lost all the money and you and you did put in more money than we had discussed and agreed upon. My bad. My <laughs> so, bad. My yeah. bad. My bad. <laughs> I'm Mary Casca, and I'm an occupational therapist and of 35 years, mostly in pediatrics, and I own Ohana Occupational Therapy, Casca Consulting, and I'm a partner, I'm in a partnership with uh, two other OTs, KMR Agency, where we do retreats. I'm one of the rare people that knew I would eventually want to have my own practice. That was one of the things that was very interesting to me because um, entrepreneurship just kind of runs in my family. Um, but, I didn't feel like I could do it, like I didn't feel like I knew enough, which I know is what a lot of people go through and they just kind of put it off, put it off. But like a lot of things, pain helped me make a big decision and so having, um, I always had good bosses but I was just in a horrible work situation where I was just being berated and um, this, it was just like I had a really bad boss and so it was like my first time being treated really badly. And so that kind of stirred it back up in me, like, I think it's time I go off on my own and do my own thing. And so I formed my LLC. Um, and long story short, I've had a private practice for 14 years now, and I've been able to provide the highest quality care in my entire career because I, because I get to control it. How did I meet Greg? 
So um, I smile because I feel like he's sort of like this hero that came into my life at a really important time. So I had a, I had a coach, private practice coach, who stopped coaching. I had him for quite a long time, so I was very coachless, needing, needing help. And, um, and Kara Welke had um, started, a, started a Facebook group and she mentioned it, my coach, Greg. And I'm like, who's Greg? I need to know who Greg is. She has a coach, Greg, and I'm coachless. And so it was promoting the 2120 challenge in 2020, and it was an online course. And um, and so then I did that, and it was amazing. And um, just continued on and took more online. And then he had um, he had the SSHC. It was during the pandemic, so he had it um, online. And then eventually, I got to you know meet him in person and meet the friends that I had made during the course. Um, Kim and Raina, I got to meet them here um, in person. That was amazing. So it's been, that has been because, I just smiled when you said, how'd you meet Greg? Because I'm like, <laughs> Greg's my hero. He helped me so much, just amazing. Okay, so I have, um, I have a husband and two sons. They're 24 and 26. Yeah, and so about, um, I think it was six or seven years ago, um, we found out that my oldest son and my husband both have a form of muscular dystrophy called FSHD, facial scapular humeral muscular dystrophy. And so my husband's using a power wheelchair now. Um, my oldest son is a zoo designer, and um, but he's he's always been very athletic, um, very much a, a you know kind of parkour monkey kind of guy. And and um, in when he was a senior, he was like, well. Mom, what's going on? I can't lift my arms up past here. And so it took a little bit, but we found out it was muscular dystrophy. Cure, um, it's one of the most common forms of muscular dystrophy, but they, um, about 15 years ago, there was a, um, a, a lady whose son was diagnosed and they found out that absolutely like no research was being done on it. And so for the last 15 years, they have done grassroots fundraising that's led to um, the NIH um, funding it and so now they know it's they know what's happening and now they're working towards the cure so I'm like highly motivated to be help people as much as I can have as much impact I can but as also I'm highly motivated to make as much money as I can because I can help the cure yeah I think gosh I have never stopped to think about like if I had not met Greg and I had not um, joined his program and then started doing learning everything that I've learned from him over these past few years. Honestly, I think I would have lost my house. And I think I would have gone bankrupt, to be honest. I really think that's what would have happened. Because I didn't know, I didn't know how to get out of my mess. Oh my gosh. You know, the more I know, the more I know you, Greg, this is, like, I wondered if I was going to get choked up. I am getting choked up thinking about this because Greg has the biggest heart. I mean, he's in a situation where he does not need to do any of this anymore. He's super successful. His family wants him all his time, you know, wants him to, but he's so passionate about um, helping us help other people. And he has the biggest heart. I'm just so grateful to you because you don't have to do this and you're doing it and you're helping us grow and helping us help other people and just, I'm just really appreciative. And I didn't want to cry on camera. I didn't, I thought if I, I would cry like I'm talking about the muscular dystrophy, but it's you asking me about Greg, that's crazy. <laughs> What I think of my dad is what I love about him is that he's really different from the other dads. He's really good. I mean, I don't know how he does it. He's very playful, and when you ask him to do something, he'll do it for you because he's so generous and nice. And it's not like he's only nice in public. He's also really nice at home, and it's just really good. That's why I love about him. Uh, I hope that it's really popular, like really, really popular. It's already popular, but I feel like I'm making it more popular. 
I, I hope it doesn't go down or anything. I think it's a really popular business and he's doing really well so far. He's making lots of money, providing for the family. Definitely amazing. Uh, I would, there's not really a lot of things that I would tell him, but I would probably tell him that I really love him. So there's not really a lot that I, that I really want to tell him, to be honest. I think it's excellent. I think it takes a lot of work and a lot of thought to put in so much into a business. I think he's done it perfectly. I wouldn't tell him to do it any differently. I would tell him to do it just the way he did. And I love all the things he does, the events, all of the big parties. But um, I think his events are probably my favorite because since I'm there, of course, I can see how he puts everything together, the small detail, details, and it's really amazing how everything works. Um, one, I love him. He's a great father. He's amazing. He's done so much to me and so much for me over the years. It's just amazing how far he's come. I'm really proud of him for everything he's, he's done because I've seen it all expand. I've seen it go from zero to just a hundred and it's beautiful. I'm really, really proud of him. So, see my dad go to work and um, you know, have to go away all day. Um, it was tough, you know, at times because he had to work a lot. Um, wouldn't come back until maybe 9, 30, 10 because, especially because he had his own clinic, had his own office. It would take him a lot longer to be able to, um, you know, come home and things like that. So, you know, he can't watch the games with him, you know, he can't do certain things with him. Um, but now it's a lot better because he's here more. Um, he's able to go places, do things. Um, we're very, very excited, very, very proud of what he's doing and where he's going and his mission to um, help people all around the world. And um, we're just really excited to see where he's gonna take it uh, in the future. Uh, I would just tell him to keep on going, keep on working hard and um, you know, just keep on doing what he's doing because it's working. So just keep on helping people and doing what he really loves. Um, you know, as the oldest, I was able to basically see everything from the start. Um, I was at an age where I could understand that my father was putting in a lot of work to something and it was inspiring, but it was also difficult, like just seeing the journey and the hardships and the struggles that he went through. Um, I knew that there was going to be a greater good that came from it, but at first it was very difficult. Uh, I felt that I wasn't able to see my dad as much and me and my dad, I feel like we've always been pretty close. So not being able to see him and hang out with him as much in the beginning was hard, but I knew that something great was going to come out of it and that in the end he would end up having more time for us because he was focusing on a better way of living. So. Yeah, I'm happy with the way things are now, though. Um, my dad definitely does inspire me. Uh, you know, I've always been a hard worker, but especially now with being in college, things have changed. Um, I've become more of a hard worker, but things have always become more difficult. But seeing the way that my dad, like how strong he is, how hardworking he is, how he literally never gives up no matter what obstacles he faces, and um, just how, just how, strong-willed of a person he is is so inspiring especially for me as someone who's like so involved in college I need to see that like I, I need to have a parent who is just really really working hard and always trying to better themselves because then it makes me want to do I would tell my dad that hmm, I feel like there's so much things that my dad can tell me there's so much advice that he gives me. But if I could tell him one thing, I would say to just keep going. Always stay strong in yourself. You know your capabilities and you know that you can always do more um, no matter what. And you do so much already, but you are one of the most inspiring people I know. So always just keep on pushing and just believe in yourself at the end of the day. I know sometimes you doubt yourself and you feel that you might not be as good, like good enough, but you are good enough. You're more than good enough and you got this. Just keep on pushing. So now we're doing that and we get to the point where 
I'm kind of hands off the clinic a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I've now gotten back a lot of my time. Yeah. I'm not working the five, six days a week anymore. I'm working like two days a week in a clinic. Remember me and used to go on our Tuesday date, dates? Yeah. We would drop yeah. Aiden off and coffee Elena dates, off and then we go on our dates, coffee yeah. dates, breakfast dates mm -hmm. and then go pick up the kids. So it's like yeah. the dream situation. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, do you remember when I sprung that thing on you that I wanted to start this thing called SSPT? Yeah. You remember that? <laughs> what you think? <laughs> Oh my God. Well, once again, here I am. I'm like, oh wow, yeah, this sounds scary. But honestly, I just thought, oh, you know, okay. He, he just, you know, he wants to help people. He's going to do this, you know, this little side thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this little, okay, like, oh, you know, I'm like a professor at school and I have, you know, like. Is that you thought I was going to be a professor? Yeah, like 20 to 50 people. Uh, let yeah. me teach them. Yeah. You know, remember that time like in PT school when you were doing like the lab assistant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing? When I was a lab assistant when we were yeah. in PT something. school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, my thought was it would be something like that. Yeah. Kind of similar yes, to yes. Lab. My name is Katie Dodd and I'm a registered dietitian. I live in Southern Oregon and I've been a dietitian for over 14 years now. I started out on the traditional track as a dietitian, and I was working in home care for probably about seven years before I started doing things on the side to make me money. Over time, I started realizing that I could make more money working for myself than for other people. So I kind of shifted from doing work for other people to building my own brand. But that's kind of, I'm jumping ahead of my story, but that's a little bit about me. I'm Katie, dietitian. So before I left the VA, I was making six figures, just around $100,000 a year in my job. And in my first year, being a full-time entrepreneur, I was able to make $365,000, which is so much more than what I thought was possible. And I think the coolest thing is the sky's the limit. There's no cap on what I can make next. As long as I can continue to put myself in the right rooms with the right people, show up and do the work and continue to work on my mindset because I continue to realize that I get my way the most. I'm the one thing that holds myself back. So. I feel like first full-time year as an entrepreneur was amazing, but I just can't wait for this year, the next year, and all of the years that are to come. Advice that I would give a younger Katie. You know, I think about this question actually a lot. I feel like over the last couple of years, I've been through a lot of things. And one thing about my personality is I don't have regrets. I don't look back with regret because I recognize every level I needed to go through what I went through to be the person I needed to be to take that next step. So when I look back on my journey, I don't have regrets, but I think looking back, the one thing is I would tell a younger Katie to be more confident in who she is and what she deserves, but also to take the risk, to not be so scared of failure, to not be such a perfectionist, and to just embrace done is better than perfect, and you're good enough just the way you are. So I think for me, when I look back, it's really speaking confidence into a younger Katie. And while I wouldn't change anything in my journey, there are little parts of me that are like, oh man, if I would have had this confidence sooner or had I gotten into this entrepreneurial world sooner, you know, how would things have looked different for me? But I think that's the biggest thing is just take the risk and be confident. So I met Greg on a Facebook Live in July of 2019. Now he was in another dietitian's Facebook group just doing a live and I remember the first time I saw him I was so impressed at the way he was talking about business and I was so impressed about the way he spoke about his faith as well and when I look back on my journey I would have never realized how that one moment would have completely changed the impact of my life and the direction that I would be going. I think the biggest message I would have for Greg is thank you. You've changed my life in ways beyond what I've shared in this video, and you know the ways that you've changed my life. But you haven't just changed my life, but you've changed the legacy for my children. And the biggest thing I wanna say is thank you. You know, it, it was tough on you though. Yeah, yeah. You were really sick. I was really sick. I, I didn't understand how sick you were. Yeah. We didn't realize how much worse it was going to get. Yeah. yeah. And the sacrifice of what yeah. I put you through. 
and how much no, yeah. I just think you know the retreats the retreats got to be tough because it's you know and it became a lot of time that you have to also invest right yeah. into doing the retreats and um, and hosting you right know, the people like hosting every every weekend and, and, yeah. and I didn't realize what was to come with my my health so you know I just feel like some a lot of it was I wasn't well so it's like you know yeah. I created a lot of stress and I think um, so here we are again talking about how, how do we get back time how do we get back know? time and it's <laughs> always been back? this yeah, whole theme yeah. from 2004 how do we get back mm -hmm. time and then we get the time and then you but you want to do more and you feel like we're so blessed yes. that we have to give and then give we start more, to give right. to people and then it's like all right now you give to people and it's more of your time how do you get back your time yes. again yeah. and then uh and so i remember at a 2018 event i remember when i was going to make this offer i had never offered anything before like and i knew that i had to do it because people were so disappointed that i didn't offer something the first year and so I said, okay, this is gonna be the offer. And we had, you know, we had that place. And then I just remember, I remember one guy stood up after I did the offer and I was so scared. And he was like, where do I sign up? So my name is Dr. Kyle Rice and I live in Reddington Shores now. I'm a physical therapist and I've actually been a physical therapist for the past seven years. So life before meeting Greg was a mess. So I started off as a physical therapist, passed my board exam, was super excited to be a PT. I was having this dream of being able to treat patients the way I wanted to, making a lot of money and being able to have a really nice lifestyle that was supported and very financially stable. However, when I got out of school, I had the rude awakening of, $205,000 worth of debt between my wife and I and not enough income to really make a dent in that every single month. So you were really stuck in this situation where it was like a financial prison that you were in because you couldn't pay any money without feeling like, oh, but I this money shouldn't go to things that I like. It should be going to the loan. So you always felt guilty buying things for yourself. So I would say like if someone is in a situation where they're like, hey, all I need to do is get paid a lot of money and see just, you know, one patient an hour, it sounds good. Um, and from my perspective, that's also something that I was wanting. But then I have started to figure out that just seeing one patient an hour isn't necessarily the, the piece that is going to bring you fulfillment. Um, fulfillment goes beyond just seeing a person it, uh, everybody's fulfillment is a bit different like what you find to be uh fulfilling to you is significantly different than what i find to be fulfilling for me it may be uh creating massive change to a lot of different people in regards to one one area like now you know i'm helping people to pass their licensure exam so that they can be physical therapists well i find a lot of fulfillment in addressing that problem because of the level of pain that I went through regarding that, right? And so that's how I find fulfillment. So just seeing the one patient an hour doesn't really bring that level of fulfillment that I need. So if I was talking to the former Kyle, I would take him back to undergrad and I would say, you know how in undergrad uh, they were pushing all of the students to declare a major, Right. And it's like you had to go down a track. And if you didn't, you were the type of student that was never going to make. You're the type of person that was never going to be successful in life because you did not choose a track. Well, it's like that throughout life. I didn't realize that until now that uh, if you're in a position where you're not feeling fulfilled and you're like, life isn't going my way, I'm trying everything, but I just can't figure it out. That's the point where you have to continue to just work at it and put yourself in positions to figure it out. 
One of the mistakes that I've made is bottling myself up, getting into the cave and trying to figure it all out myself instead of exposing myself to a group of people that are fulfilled and have been able to find their passion. And when you step around them, they're able to ask you the right questions that really expose what is it that you were called to do. And that's exactly what Greg did for me on that call. I was lost. I was confused, but I took a step out of my comfort zone and ask for help from someone who was able to find fulfillment and able to find passion. And with that, he was also able to ask me the specific questions to allow me to find my route to fulfillment. So I would say to my old self, continue to work at it. Put yourself around the right people, people that are passionate, people that are fulfilled, fulfilled but also can guide you down that road. My name is Brandon Smith. I'm a physical therapist. I currently live in Gulfport, Mississippi, but I've lived all over the U.S. When I graduated high school, I actually went into the uh, Navy as an air crew rescue swimmer. I got medically discharged uh, a few months in, got out, not sure what I wanted to do. Went to community college for a bit. Then I transferred to uh, state school where I got a degree in biology, which was a terrible decision because all I could do with that degree was deliver food. So I ended up wasting a lot of time. After that, I actually went and got a master's degree in public health. I was shadowing multiple professions, not sure if I wanted to be a physician, a physical therapist, a PA, a podiatrist. Shadowed all these things, ended up getting a master's degree because I listened to the wrong person that told me more education equaled more money. And after that time and getting that degree, I then got a job in clinical trials. From there, I basically was able to get make more money than delivering food, but didn't know what to do. I realized that well, from doing research, PTs, you know, they only work like nine to five or less. I saw on Google at the time that home health PTs could work, you know, 10 to two and make 90 to 100K a year. Greg actually used to lecture at my PT school, University of Miami, he used to lecture there. And the day he lectured, I wasn't in class, unfortunately. But um, I knew Greg through my classmates and I talked to him online. When I actually tried to join his program initially, people that didn't like me said, don't let him in your program. Anyway, I ended up getting into uh, Greg's SSPT season seven, I think. And at that point, this was 2018, 2019, due to the value I was providing to the group, Greg took me out to breakfast. And now I've known Greg five plus years. And that relationship with Greg and just knowing Greg and being in Greg's world has paid off exponentially. So I was making 140K as a PT. However, I was working 28 days, days a month. I was working like, seven to seven, I didn't know what day it was, I didn't know what time it was. So for me to get to that level of income, I literally had to burn myself out. Now with entrepreneurship, I make a lot more than that. I'm hoping to cross over half a mil this year, but that all being said, now I work maybe two, three hours a week. Greg, thank you so much for letting me into your program five or six years ago when people in your program told, told you not to. It's been great just knowing you and seeing you at, seeing you at events over the past few years. And I really look forward to partnerships in the future and working together in the future. And I'm just really grateful for the opportunity to even be here this weekend. Thank you. I feel like that event was, it was the funnest one. Yeah. It was the funnest one for me. Um, I mean, the first one was the, always the first, you yeah. know? But the second always one, memorable. I just remember like, it was like, wow, we really were doing some serious stuff. And people were not just interested in entrepreneurship, they were becoming entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And they were willing to invest and um, and try to make themselves better, yeah. you know, and they're willing, they're willing to go all in, yeah. you know. And then the, the third year, that was a big year. That was a big year. That was where now it's like, we took those people in the mastermind mm -hmm. and we had gotten so many people, crazy results. And then we basically, it started to move away from me to like the feature was on these people. Yeah. And, um, and then everything just kind of exploded. Yeah. I remember that year, didn't it like somebody rip off your necklace yeah. or something like that? <laughs> I, at the event? Yeah. Was, like, you feel like was, you were like It a... wasn't that special anyways, but <laughs> oh, it was a bit scary because, yeah. you know, everyone knows I'm a big introvert. So it's like walking into the crowd and people screaming like, like you're a rock star or something and yeah. grabbing me and, Crazy. and yeah. yeah. So I remember now it's end of 2020, uh, you know, we had kind of talked about maybe this is it. Maybe I'm going to yeah. go in a different direction. 
but I kept on feeling this pull back to it. Yeah, because we weren't sure, like, you know, what are people going to want now? Like, we need to do some different thing because right. now we have this pandemic and, you know, trying to figure it all out. Yeah, yeah. So I remember before I left coaching, there was one girl that had reached out to me and said, hey, I know you're taking a break from coaching, but when you come back, can you work with me? Do you remember who it was? Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> okay. Kelly, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I just told her, I, I knew coming back, I had to do something. Mm -hmm. So I said, hey, I'll coach you. And, uh, and then there was a few other people. Katie mm -hmm. was another one that she came into the program. There was only a few people in it. Okay. And then we just kind of like started to, I just started back. Hi, my name's Amanda Fisher. I am a pelvic floor physical therapist and I live in Kansas City, Missouri. I graduated high school. Uh, my dream was always to be a public or to be a physical therapist. I played sports all through high school, had injuries, which led me down the path of being a physical therapist. After high school, I chose to go to Mizzou thinking I needed to be at a university that had the doctorate program because at that time, physical therapy was turning into a doctoral program. After graduating with my doctorate in physical therapy, I remember thinking I was going to make like $88,000 minimum as a physical therapist and soon learned while signing, um, I'm in the Midwest, while signing my, for my first job, I was making $23.75 an hour with my doctorate as a physical therapist. So um, I really sought out coaches on Facebook at that time. Instagram wasn't really popular um, in 2016 and 2017 and started my own business um, January 2017, bought my LLC, Empower Your Pelvis. And um, then I started dabbling in seeing patients mobily, so driving house to house to treat pelvic floor dysfunction then found a little closet. I begged my old boss to let me come back and rent a closet, literally a closet that used to hold TheraBand and Swiss balls um, for their patients to buy. And I had a little little table, treatment table in there that I could only treat on one side of the patient and then have to completely turn everybody to treat on the other side because that's how small the room was. But he allowed me to start my practice and build my practice within this tiny closet. And I think I started in August, 2020 working with Greg and at the time we were just, he was just doing quarters. And so I would work with him for a couple months. Um, I remember the first time asking my husband like, Ooh, this is going to cost about like $2,000. And he was like, are you insane? This guy's just going to take your money. And so I did a C-section online group to pay for Greg. And then I ended up doubling my money. So he was like, okay, this guy might have something like know something about what he's talking about. So I signed up for another quarter with him. And he had the, like had convinced me to start selling products in the clinic. So we started making extra money in the clinic. Um, I took a quarter off with Greg and I, I think it was at the time we just had so much going on in the clinic, moving locations and just busting at the seams. Well, that quarter I didn't advance in my business. So I had another talk with my husband of like, I need to sign up with Greg. So I did. I signed up the quarter of March 2021 and then ended up making $10,000 on a C-section five day challenge with him. And then ended up selling another, I think 8,000 after that of coaching clients. Um, and my husband's like, sign up whatever you need to do with Greg. So since then I have been in Greg's world and doing his year coaching. I'm Amanda Fisher, Empower Your Pelvis. You can find me on Instagram, Empower dot your dot pelvis and on TikTok, empower your pelvis, YouTube, empower your pelvis across all boards. Um, and the next year I'm hoping to work with businesses or entrepreneurs just like you to help grow your business exponentially and help really target your social media to help market and grow your business. Cause that's what I've done over the last couple of years. And I wouldn't be sitting in this Kansas location had I not started marketing and targeting my audience online. And you can do it too. Hi, my name is Brittany Lewis and I am head of operations. So a little background about me. I came from a organization where I was an executive assistant for 11 years for a senior vice president and CIO of the largest healthcare system here in Florida. 
Um, well, I actually had my own business. I left the corporate world at the beginning of 2019 and just started my own wedding and event planning business. And that's actually how I met Greg. When I first met Greg, I was planning on just doing his events, his mastermind events that he had. And then one thing led to another because I kind of looked at his schedule and he didn't have time to pee. He was literally in calls back to back every 30 minutes from like nine in the morning till 6 p.m. So we kind of just got to talking. He kind of learned about my background and I said, well, I can help you figure all of this out. And I didn't even know, but he was already looking for an executive assistant and it just kind of worked out. So I did his event and I also helped him with his calendar. I had to learn everything about the business and every single program that he's done and every platform that he uses. And we've just had to kind of make it work. And that was all in 2019 and then the pandemic hit. So we kind of had to shift a lot of things and I just kind of went along with the punches and just learned as much as I can. And it has been definitely an emotional roller coaster from the highs and the lows and the in-betweens and trying to just survive COVID and also get him back to where he needs to be for coaching and all of that stuff. So it has been an absolute roller coaster from start to now, which I'm head of operations. So it's kind of evolved from the very beginning and we've just grown so much and I'm just proud of everything that we've done. So I would say the biggest thing that motivates me is Gregory. <laughs> so as much as he drives me insane and he does every day, um, he motivates me to be a better person. Life has just been, oh God, what is there? But um, he's really had my back in a lot of things and I know I've had his back and we've kind of had to pick each other up when we just did not want to move forward anymore. And that's kind of where, you know, he motivates me every single day to get up. I do what I love, so I don't feel like I'm working ever, but it's hard work of what we do. We deal with a lot of things day in and day out, but Greg is the true inspiration and motivation to get me up every day. Um, I would just say, Gregory, thank you. <laughs> thank you for making me a better person and just my life better. Just in every single aspect of my life, you've been there for me through a lot of ups, a lot of downs and losses. Um, you've never, you know, faltered and you've just, you've just always been there for me. So just know that you make a difference in this world started to just feel this like I don't know like this fire, fire. you know what I mean just like they were Being motivating relit, me yeah. yeah you know mm -hmm. and um and yeah and uh and so I I just started feeling it like it wasn't like crazy but I was like okay do you yeah, remember when you told me your, in the car that night your fire was coming back yeah. like you were just in your element yeah and... what did you, you remember what you said to me it was a big uh, thing for me yeah I I think I said something about like this is your calling you gotta yeah. you know like you gotta do this again. you gotta do this like you can't like you know there was no money your involved. Light or it something. wasn't my students but it's like when i'm around people and i feel like i can help them yeah i just you know and and i just was like it all came so back. being on this journey with greg has been um so many emotions you know amazing it's it's um watching him as the person he is and fulfilling his purpose, living out his passion, helping others. Um, it's just really been a joy to watch and, you know, just seeing that like, um, that drive that he has for what he does. Um, and just knowing that like he's serving others and, and bringing hope to so many um it inspires me and and you know just motivates me as a person and and also as his wife um i've been you know there with him from the beginning and i've seen um all the different stages that he's gone through and um so it just you know it gives me a sense of pride to watch him 
you know, in his element and to see how um, confident he is and, and just how much he's grown through all of it and just knowing that he's fulfilling his purpose gives me joy. Like he said, like he gets busy or he gets overwhelmed with so much as it's his programs have grown. It's put a lot of pressure on him and and it's a lot that he's doing. And before, prior to him having a team to help, um, it you know, it's kind of like put us back into the struggle of not having as much time to be together. So I think that, um, you know, it's, it's had this moment where there has been some struggles with, um, you know, trying to get that time back. And so um, I think this is what, you know, propels him to focus on creating and making a way to get that time back. Okay. Um, so now looking at where um, Greg is at and how far he's come, um, it gives me, you know, a sense of, um, of pride and just like, you know, wow, we, we've gone through this journey together. And as I said, there's been so many highs and lows and just being here now and seeing his successes, um, it gives me, um, you know, like a sense of fulfillment, like, wow, he's really doing this, really living out his purpose and, and, you know, he's doing amazing at it. And as far as like how I see the future going, um, I just think that he will continue to, um, you know, create programs. He'll continue to serve. And as I've always said before, um, I believe in him. So I know that whatever he puts his mind to doing, he'll, you know, he'll go full force in and, and he'll be amazing. Um, so I would just say to Greg, you know, already how much I love you and you have my support 100% um, to, um, you know, continue out your dream. Um, I feel that you have um, inspired so many and motivates so many and that you know the world needs you they need um, what you're offering um, people need hope you know there's there's lots of people now we know that are struggling um, and as you've said you know they're praying and they're they're they want that hope and and you could be um, their answered prayer and so I would tell you to, you know, follow your heart and follow your, your dreams and just um, be you, be who you are. Um, you know, that's what I love. That's what the people are getting to see and love and, and just continue to trust in God and just remember faith over fear. And that's when we started. That was the first ever Smart Success Healthcare Live. Yeah. 2021 yeah. and um, and we did it we and it was pretty it. awesome yeah. and it just it restarted everything for us mm -hmm. and and then I think without that you know we don't have the office and we don't you know like like we didn't have the year that we had last year mm -hmm. so then here we are again now and we're like gosh I need time again because yeah. I see the mission is building it's yeah. growing mm -hmm. and then uh, and then I started telling you, babe, here's how I'm gonna get my time back. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna grow. I'm and, gonna grow. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Okay. And I started telling you about all these people, uh -huh. AT and this one and oh Justin and all these people, right? I'm like, okay, he's going crazy again. <laughs> he's going crazy again. But, you know, I feel as though, you know, I, I, I wanna build this mission, I wanna help the people. I know that there's not just one Kelly or one Katie or one Joseph or one Kyle or one, you know, Mary or, you know, Amanda, or, you know, whoever, all the different students. I know that there are so many other people that are like them that just need a little guidance and they need help. Yeah. And I know that there's, there's, there's thousands of them out there. Mm -hmm. And I know that they are waiting for 
they're, they're praying yeah. and they're asking for people like me and you mm -hmm. and the team that we have yeah. to, for God to put those people in their lives. And I know that I can't do it all. Yeah. And so I'm just so excited that I have people that really are amazing at what they do and they want to help these people as well. They yeah. feel really strongly about it. And, um, and also I want to be with you yeah. and the kids. Yeah. So I want to get back my time. More time for us. <laughs> yeah, more time for us. And more. More cuppa. More cuppa. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so to my wife, my best friend, I want to tell you thank you. Thank you for giving me the greatest gift that you could ever give me, uh, which is you. Uh, thank you for um, being my best friend. Thank you for being uh, my partner through the highs, through the lows. Uh, more importantly, thank you for believing in me because I, a lot of times I don't believe in myself, but there has never been one time that you've ever doubted my abilities. Um, even though you think I'm crazy with going after these big goals and these big dreams, uh, you've never doubted me, and I understand that that's not normal, uh, that a lot of people don't have that, and I don't ever want to take you for granted, so thank you so much. Thank you for um, enduring the late nights. Thank you for doing this all while you've been sick and doing it so gracefully with elegance and classiness um, and with beauty. And as beautiful you, as you are on the outside, you are even more beautiful on the inside. Thank you so much for always being my ride or die. And I promise to continue to make you proud. And I promise to get back more of my time by leveraging everything that I possibly can. I love you so much. To the Todd Squad, Adri, RJ, Elena, Aiden. You know what I love about you guys so much is that you guys know what daddy is doing, but when I come home, all you care about is dad and Entrepreneurship has its ups and downs, but when I come home, it's gone. You guys just care that I'm here. And thank you so much for the laughs. Thank you so much for the great conversations. Thank you so much for, um, for watching all the shows together. And I'm just so proud of the four of you for the amazing young men and women that you um, have become. And so daddy loves you, I appreciate you so much. And I hope I'm making you proud and not just telling you to go after your dreams, but showing you what it looks like to go after your dreams. To my students, to SS8C Nation, uh, I just wanna tell you thank you so much for believing in me. Thank you for trusting me. Thank you for trusting yourself. Thank you for trusting each other. Uh, you uh, give me so much drive you give me so much conviction every single day to move this mission forward. And the main thing that inspires me every day is to see you all going after your dreams, to see you all dealing with the lows, to see you all cheering on each other during the highs and supporting each other regardless of what's going on. And so I just wanna tell you, thank you. Thank you for continuing to move this forward and thank you for just making healthcare better, uh, and it starts with you. And I just wanna tell you that as your leader, I will continue to do everything in my power to make sure that life gets better for you. I will work tirelessly to make sure that we change healthcare together. I love you guys.